Okay, hello, my name's Mark. Now, I've just been to the post office and picked this up. Um, it's come from Canada, DTF UHF. I'm trying to figure out the mirroring here, and I couldn't wait to get home to open it, so I'm just going to open it up here. Um, this only took... We'll have to excuse the coffee machine in the background there. This only took uh, nine days to get here in Canada. Special postage. Oh, Foil package stuck in there with a bit of tape. So what we have, this is um, Carl has sent me this. It is a four-channel, four-channel open LRS receiver, and I'll. I'll do some more filming, we'll get a much closer look back at home on, on the decent camera, but you know, that's the first look, so I'm just going to sit here and stare at it over lunch. Okay, so that was filmed quite a few months ago, so apologies to Carl, because um, he sent me this little unit for free as sort of a thank you for the work I've been doing, and I do very much appreciate it, and I apologise that I just hadn't been able to get this um, film this because of course my new car arrived and I just dropped everything and focused on getting that up to speed so I could go and do those trips and stuff anyway here it is up close um, the what I like about it this one came without without the actual um, headers connected so you can solder them on at a later date and what I really like is is the actual RFM module. It's one of the uh, slimline ones. It doesn't have the the huge stonking uh, crystal that the HK ones. It's got a nice little surface SMD crystal there, so it keeps it quite a low profile, and it's very very small as well. A very nice small unit. Now it is it is four channel. Uh, correct. Could be wrong about this, but I think it can be configured for six channels using uh, two of these pins as well and but most of the time these are used for programming but with a lot of them there's new um, OpenLRS configurator software out which is really nice you don't have to mess around with Arduino or anything like that and all you need to do is flash this once and then you do your configuration of this wirelessly so you can flash it with the OpenLRS firmware embedded into whatever module you've got especially if you're going to stick this into like a really slimline glider or something like that and then um, you can actually configure it wirelessly so you power it up and then you configure it via the um, transmitter unit which is really really handy um, but typically if it's already mounted in a model you probably only want to configure it once anyway now yeah. let's see how close we can get get on there now this this model's actually obsolete now, and all the new ones that Carl's making, he's actually integrated a very small SMD filter in here, a low-pass filter. So a few people who are familiar with FPV, they say put a uh, filter on your LRS system, and the new ones have a little filter just put in here, just after after the um, transmitter output on the RFM module, and between the... the um, your connector there and it's a really nice tiny thing rather than a big bulky um, screw-on filter that's like about so long it's actually built into the new board so that just uh, provides a bit of protection from the uh, higher frequencies interfering with it with, with this module which is really cool now the performance of this I suspect it's just as good as all the other receiver modules out there, uh, all the receiver modules use the same, all the receiver units use the same RFM 22B module. I think, I'm not sure yet, no one's made a receiver that's got the uh, one watt module on it yet, but they may come in the future. So a bit of a bit of a closer look, this is all handmade, the module of course isn't, it's just soldered on, but this is all handmade. There's a uh, all the, all, the, all the pins there are labelled, sorry about the shaking there, 
the pins are labelled. So this is this is set up like the four channel FR Sky units. You've got ground in the middle and then and then five volts here and then your signal lines there. So when you plug it on there, you know, you have ground towards the middle. On the reverse side, the uh, Let's turn it up the right way. On the on the reverse side, you can see your TX and RX lines are, are labelled there. 3.3 volts. Remember, don't program these with 5 volts. That's why it's nice and big. And um, all right, and another neat little feature of this is you can see here on the on the other side, you've got RSSI is labelled there. So that pin can use be used for an RSSI output. Uh, I think you need to put a, a little filter on there, like a little capacitor on there to get an analog RSSI output. Um, your SCL there and your SDA down here, these are what's what's called the I2C, which is another communications protocol. And not 100% sure yet, but uh, last time I was on the IRC networks hanging out with the OpenLRS guys. Hi, by the way, Curry was working on code that would allow you to use a second receiver, a little one like this would be ideal, as a satellite receiver so you can get sort of diversity, just like the EZ UHF stuff, except it'll be, it'll be better because it's open source. Um, you've also got here uh, the PPM as well, but all these are uh, configurable in software. Yeah, the, there's a. I think the one to replace this is actually a six channel, and um, but as far as I can understand, this can be configured to six channels. So let's go and have a look. Okay, before we power it up, first thing we want to do is make sure we put some sort of antenna on it, or if you've got a little 50 ohm terminator, um, even better. Then I just like an antenna on there because hasn't been proven, but I think. These can get damaged if you try and run them for too long without an antenna. Uh, and then you want to attach your FTDI programmer. I'll just plug the header header in there. I'll make sure it's on 3.3 uh, volts and not 5 volts if it's a configurable one like this. There are, is another type of programmer. Uh, it's uh, C. I can't remember the designation, but I, I have a lot of trouble. I haven't been able to get those to work with Mac OS X, and um, these ones work fine with uh, OS X. Anyway, plug it on and make sure we're all orientated the right way. I oh, will notice as well, I, I like this, he's used the Spark Fun footprint here, where, where these, these are slightly staggered. So, when you fit that in, when you put that in there, it's actually it's it's not wobbling around a lot. It's it's almost almost locked in there. So I'm just going to see if I can flash this without actually soldering it in, and then I can just pull that out and um, and happy days. It stays even lighter. So we'll give that a try. What you want to do is go to www.dtf. DTFUHF.com. Now this is Carl's website. Very, very simple. Um, oh, let's have a look in his shop. This is where you get the modules, by the way. Now, right now he's got for sale the four-channel long-range receiver here. And I think, what's that? That's a bit of tape over there because there is a six channel uh, version available. He's just put a four channel over there. And it comes pre flashed with OpenLRS NG software. So if you get this and, and you get the transmitter unit from him, you won't have to flash anything at all, which is really nice. Um, low pass input filter, as I said before, PPM output up to 16 channels. Uh, RSSI output, digital and can be turned into 3.3 volt analog with a solder jumper. So he's already got the um, the the uh, the necessary parts on there, so it'll put out an analog RSSI signal. Uh, it 
by digital, it'll, it'll put out digital so you can actually control a servo with it. Some people like to put their servo in front of their FPV cameras to indicate S, um, RSSI, so it just moves like that in front of the FPV camera. Very simple way to do it. Um, yeah, all, all the, your usual OpenLRS um, features and stuff, and the source code fully supports uh, these units, okay, so it, the source code and these units have sort of been developed together so you know it's going to work with OpenLRS NG. There are a number of ways to configure your pins on, on there so you can do it the way you want um, and yeah I think that's that's 40 bucks um, not sure on well unfortunately zero units in stock but you know maybe you might get back into it and what else we got here oh we've got the DTF UHF 1 watt deluxe TX here as well um, I'll find out about whether Carl is actually going to be making more of these in the future because on the website here it says zero in stock maybe it's just part of the website um, I'm not sure yeah, sold out, so that's unfortunate. Anyway, moving on, also on his website here, he's got links to all the necessary OpenLRS LRSNG stuff. So, we've got the configurator. Now, this is cool. So, click on the configurator. And, basically, it's a Google Chrome app. So you need to be using Google Chrome, and I've already got it installed, but basically you just click on that link and then click install and away you go. So I'm going to launch it, and here it is. Now I'm going to start the firmware flasher, and I'm going to select my board, which is this one here, the RX 4-channel DTF UHF, and I'm going to just click flash. Now this um, programmer, this uh, software does a pretty thorough job, it even erases the EEPROM of these, so it takes a little bit longer than what you might be used to if you're doing it with Arduino. And there we go, she's flashing away, We're verifying, and we are successful. Now that's the only time you need to connect it, so once it's programmed you can disconnect it and then you can actually program it using your um, TX module. So all the further settings you, you do with a TX module. So we'll leave the firmware flasher. And disconnect this. I have to be careful disconnecting and reconnecting this because it tends to crash my crash my um, computer or something with the serial drivers on OS X, which it doesn't like. And I'm going to hook it, hook this up to my trans to my transmitter. I've got got an existing hole in here, so I can just plug in my little FTDI programmer in there and. So I'm plugged in. Now you can either provide power to your module or do it with the radio. I'm providing power via the USB in this case. Well, via the FTDI program, 3.3 volts. So I'll select the TX module. No, we can't because I need to connect first. So let's connect. Connected successfully, ID5. Right, now we're on our settings. Now I've recently flashed this, so I'm now, I know I'm up to date on my TX module. And you, you'd flash your TX module in the similar way that I just uh, flashed my RX module. Bear me, with me a second, I'm going to apply power to my little uh, RX module here. Now, just worthy of noting, uh, you can apply 5.5 volts to the power here only 
3.3 volts here and 5 volts here. So I'm just going to set this up so I can apply power to it. All right, so we'll we'll hook her up, give it give it power. Um, not the recommended way to do this, of course. Normally, you would use an you'd power it off your ESC or some sort of UBEC. All right, and we're away. And I can tell you now, at the moment, it's drawing um, 400 milliamps. So we will. Now we're connected to our TX module, what you want to click on is RX module. Connection to the receiver module successfully established. What we've got here, we've got our ports and what channels they output. At the moment we've got a RX and TX, but if you want you can connect it, you can configure them as um, channel 5 and 6 there if you like. Um, if you look at the other ones, for instance port 4, we can select SCL and analog there, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that's analog input. And here we've got port 3, RSSI and packet loss beeper, that's a new feature I'm not aware of. It's been a while since I've been messing with the OpenLRS stuff and it is, it is changing all the time. Um, SDA and analog as well so by analog you can put a 3.3 volt signal anything that ranges from 0 to 3.3 volts and then you can transmit that back to your transmitter and if you've got the FR Sky telemetry enabled and those modes all set up you can uh, view those values on your screen there I use it to transmit my battery voltage back usually and here you've got PPM so just say if you, if you select PPM mode you can disable all these other ones but for now we'll, we'll just pretend that I've got a uh, 6 channel 1 um, you can also output your RSSI on any servo channel here like I explained before if you want to have a servo as your RSSI meter in front of your camera um, minimum PPM sync time if you don't understand that don't mess with it uh, always bind on startup limit PPM output to 8 channels now one thing about this software it doesn't have sort of any sort of extended help or anything like that so it'd be nice if I could just hover over that and it pop up a little thing with a bit more details but you know that's picking at straws people make this stuff for free which which is one thing I really love but this is awesome that like been away from the whole thing for a while and I just wanted to flash my stuff and get flying so I went straight and used this and no problems. Uh, you got a configurable, configurable uh, fail safe delay now and you know you got all these other little options. You got your beacon, uh, you saw my beacon video. Now they've actually put that code that I made for the beacon video, that um, custom tone and it was originally just three tones of decreasing power and I changed it to five tones of decreasing power and that's in the main tree now so you get that uh, close encounters of the third time beacon happening now and basically when you're done setting it all up you just go save to EEPROM and you're away you've got yourself a six channel receiver now I'm not sure what Carl is getting up to. We'll go, we'll go back to his website, but um, maybe he's just having a break. Like I had a break because it is a hard job making hardware, and uh, you know I would prefer to buy my stuff from Carl. It's made in Canada, by the way, and his postage is really quick, and you know it's been tested at least at least once so if anything goes wrong it's your own stupid fault and usually I've seen a lot of people putting 5 volts into these things anyway so we'll go back to uh, DTF UHF website and I will keep an eye on this and if Carl does decide to make some more 
I'll certainly do a short video just to let everyone know because these are really um, worthwhile and I think they're really nice and I do like oh, he's got a really nice manual as well by the way I do like this one what deluxe TX module as well um, let's have a look at the manual They, we've got a wiki on GitHub, GitHub now, and okay, there's a few broken links here. Ah, here we go. The images are loading. This is what I was looking for. Um, pretty sure it was Carl that made these, and it's a very, very nicely labelled. Um, manual here explains how it all works and stuff. There's the analog RSSI jumper. And if we wait a bit. Broken link there. Anyway, who cares? These are better. Anyway, anyway cheers. Uh, thanks for watching. I may do another video on this OpenLRSNG configuration software, but that's been a little bit of an overview and an inter introduction to the, the DTF UHF hardware, which Let's just hope that Carl is willing to make some up. If you're there, Carl, put a little comment on the, um, below the video and let us know what's going on. Cheers. Thanks for watching.